Hey there! Subscribe to my channel. And also press this bell icon. So you never miss any new updates cause whenever we upload new video you will get a notification on your phone. Hi! Today in my bench I have this Deton and it is a professional sound system. It is basically a power amplifier. And the model number of this unit it is the Power 3000. Now the owner of this unit as he said he never used it and it was in its box so he opened it and he tried to use it and it didn't work so he took it to a guy that he knew and he tried to fix it and as he said that he fixed it but when he bring it back and he tried to use it uh, the sound in both channels was completely distorted and even when he boosts up the uh, volume at the higher level or the input uh, at the the highest level it never sounded right so today in this video we are going to try to open it and we will see what's wrong with it and how we can fix it so without further ado let's get started so in order you can remove the cover in this model you have to remove the two brackets they were uh, installed in this side and in this side and they are also a mounting bracket they are a corner shape uh, bracket as you can see and you have to remove a uh, four screw from each one of them and also you have to remove uh, two screws from this side and also two screws from this side and three on the back so yeah I must say I was surprised about the uh, thickness of the metal and uh, the build quality and the engineering behind the uh, the cover and how they mount the cover to the chassis of the unit I mean it is a really really uh, industrial uh, build quality and here is the screws they were installed to uh, to fit the cover and to secure the cover to the cabinet so yeah so let me pause this video and remove the cover and we will take a look at the inside so here is the cover has been removed and I must say it is really really rigid type of cover I mean the metal thickness it is about 1.2 millimeter so yeah so anyway let me put the cover as a side and take a look at the build quality of this unit here you go wow really nice build quality i like it already i mean two huge to radial transformer and from the uh, size of it it is about 20 amp each one of these here is the main uh, filter capacitor PC board the fan and I guess this is the protection circuit the preamp and I guess from the wiring that the main amplifier it is underneath this board so yeah as you can see if I just zoom in a little bit looks like the main pots or the main adjustable uh, VR resistor there has been they did not has been touched but uh, as you can see the plug has been removed because of the uh, adhesive 
that the the factory use in order so it can they can secure the plug into its place has been disturbed and has been torn out and also as you can see in here and also in this plug in here and in here and so so someone indeed removed this board previously <laughs> Oh my god, the wires, and my guess is that these are the VCC wires from, they took the power and they transferred the power from this main board to the power amp, they are not even connected, so what the hell did that one uh, ever did that one do so yeah anyway what I'm going to do with this first of all uh, I'm going to remove this board and inspect the kind of work that has been done to it and check the uh, amplifier board beneath it and then we will go from there I mean, look at the build quality in this. Wow, I really like this. It has been a long time since I've seen something that it is built in this kind of build that has this type of build quality. Wow. So, without a further ado, let's begin. And here is the uh, preamp board has been removed from its place in the cabinet and I remove all of the screws they were used in order so they can secure this board into its correct place in the cabinet. I have to admit it is really interesting the way they install this board into the cabinet. I mean they use a, this kind of special studs in order so they can secure the board into the right place and the right height. These kind of studs, they have a screw in the other end. You can screw it in into the uh, body of the unit or into the uh, cooler. In this case, uh, they use the cooler in order so they can secure the stud into its place and also you can screw in the the uh, screws they were uh, use it in order so they can tighten this board firmly into the uh, body of the unit so I'm really impressed about the, this way and this method that they use this is really expensive by the way this is not cheap so yeah I must say this is a really really expensive unit and this is not something cheap that you can buy it cheaply this is the real deal I really like this already now one thing that caught my attention while I was uh, removing all of these uh, screws in order so I can remove this board from its place in the cabinet that this stud, the stud it was in here, uh, the screw in it, it is keep turning and it is not uh, moving from its place. So after a lot of wiggling I managed to remove the screw and I had to press it uh, between the uh, the screwdriver and also the PC board but I remove it eventually and once I did remove this board from its place I uh, unscrew that stud and I found something really interesting the threads uh, they were supposed to be inside of this stud they were erased so yeah I can't really imagine what kind of effort and how much he tied uh, the screw uh, down in order so he can strip the thread so yeah what a dumbass 
I mean, this is a really machined type of uh, stud, so yeah. What a dumbass. Anyway, I will have to find out a way in order so I can retrieve or uh, regain the uh, the, st uh, the threads or make a new, uh, new threads or maybe I will use a thicker uh, screw and try to mount it instead so I don't know what I'm going to do but I will have to find a solution to this anyway back into the preamp board and I must say if we flip the board into the other side and let me just show you the connectors the speaker connector these are secured into the cabinet using a threaded type of screw and they are threaded as you can see and they are brass they have metal inserted inside of them and it is brass so really sums up to that these uh, screwed end type of uh, uh, speaker terminals they are held to the cabinet using a self tappers and they are about four millimeter there is nothing wrong with that but I would rather if they use the same method but it is much more expensive as you can see it is this thing it is built like a tank and I'm really really for the uh, last time I'm really impressed about the build quality they use and I must say it is really really high class so let me just flip the board into the other side and see what is type of work has been done to this board nothing in here as you can see there is some uh, flux residue in here and that is simply common maybe he tried to he replaces I see maybe not I don't know but I will have to test it and as you can see nothing so far uh, there is no indication so far that this section has been tampered with in any way except for this and maybe it is has been done in the factory here we go as you can see there is a solder mess and solder messy solder in here so let me just zoom in a little bit in order so you can see it better as you can see someone definitely was in here because this is something really sloppy uh, solder job soldering job so yeah and if we flip the board into the other side we can see that someone used or the uh, the technician that the owner took this unit to it he used this uh, this is called a uh, IC header so this is really handy and really it is not cheap uh, and it is used in order so you can replace the IC without the need of uh, desoldering it from the uh, board so yeah but I really like the idea about using this kind of header I see header but uh, he should done a uh, better job in uh, resoldering it so what I'm going to do I'm going to uh, test this IC and the other IC and uh, try to power up this board uh, with external power and we will see how the uh, op amp will function and what kind of signal that this it is going to produce and so I can uh, test these ICs individually and see if they are working or not so let me just put this board aside and take a look at the 
uh, main amplifier board as you can see the main amplifier board it is really nice layout that the engineer who designed this he did I really like it these type of transistors they are sunken the main uh, uh, power transistors are sunken I don't know if it is the original sunken or a uh, knockoff but actually they look really they look really really good as you can see really nice layout and uh, the servicing of this unit it is really really easy it is not uh, horrible and I really like it I'm going to test each of these transistors individually and see how and if there is something it is damaged in them I don't uh, think that there is something it is wrong in these transistors or uh, transistors or in this board but however I needed I need to test them before I power up the unit after I did the, the inspection of the uh, op amp ICs and in order so I can make sure that this thing will run right so yeah so i'm going to do all of this and we will see what will happen so i decided to power up the preamp board using the uh, original power supply of the unit so what i did i plugged in this jack and this jack it is directly connected to the uh, capacitor board pc board and it is designed to power up the uh, regulator circuit that they uh, feed the power directly to the op amp and also it is designed to power the uh, the main relay and also the uh, protection circuit so without a further ado let's power up the unit and we will see what kind of voltages we should get so first of all let me plug in the main here you go here is my test power cable has been connected and let me push the power button as you can see this thing draws up to 600 watt when it boots up so this thing it is a power hungry not to mention there is two a huge torado transformer anyway so here is my DMM has been connected and has been set to volt. I already uh, soldered this stud and connected the negative of the the need uh, of the VOM or the lead the negative lead of the VOM uh, or the DMM. So in here, this is the one of the uh, power supply rails, and in here we have. 34 33 volt it is about 33.8 uh, volts and in here we have also 33.8 volts and the output of this resistor the 2 watt resistor we have in this uh, pin over here we have 33.6 volts and in here we have 14 Oh my god, we have a problem in the op amp circuit. So, yeah, and it is either the uh, diode or the transistor. And this thing, by the way, it doesn't use a regulator IC, it uses a transistor in order so it can regulate the power. Uh, so, yeah, testing this pin over here, we have 14.2, and that is normal because this is the operating, operating voltages. Uh, the normal operating voltages in these op amp and they are by the way they are the NE 5532 and the negative we have 10 volts so we definitely have a problem in the op amp so what I'm going to do I'm going to remove all of these op amp one by one and test each one 
uh, individually and we will see what is uh, which one it is, it is the faulty in these op amp so I desolder all of the uh, op amp from their places and I tested each one of them individually and actually what turns out that these two are basically drawing a lot of current than usual so I replace these and also I replace the other one as well and I use the uh, NE uh, 5532 the original one and I had these in my old stock so yeah I was lucky uh, not to buy anything from the market so yeah and also I remove all of these components, uh, all of the transistors from the driver, preamp driver of the main amplifier and I test each of these uh, uh, components individually and every uh, transistor that I pulled and all of the zaners and the diode they are working fine except these two capacitors and actually what these two capacitors are if I just remove or bend the board you can see these two blue ones these two are basically a 100 microfarad on uh, 25 volts and they are between the output of these driver pre-driver transistors so yeah they were uh, off in value a lot and one of them it is uh, as I remember it was swollen so yeah this is the one so I replaced the two of them uh, one thing I failed to mention before that when I plugged in this uh, jack over here you have the I did disconnect the two uh, power cable that feed the power to this uh, circuit over here the preamp circuit and because this circuit it is not uh, biasing and the uh, the biasing transistor it is in the other half of the uh, board or in the uh, other half of the uh, uh, circuit board uh, or the lower board uh, you need to disconnect this in order so this thing doesn't blow up into your face so yeah I disconnect these two so yeah as you can see I cleaned up uh, the board from the flux residue and here is the result as you can see it is much much more cleaner than it was before so yeah anyway without further ado let me uh, connect the uh, power to this unit and see what kind of voltages we should get so yeah let me just plug it in there we go already there we go so it has been plugged in let me push the power button and here is the power button has been clicked in I hope it, not, it will not burn into my face blow into my face here you go let me measure first of all the power in here we have 14.2 volts as you can see and at the positive we have 14.3 a one uh, 0 0.1 volts between the two it is quite common so yeah and as you can see my DMM it is all wagged out and that is because the I'm running this unit over the uh, on the inverter so yeah so anyway let me hook a signal to this unit and we will see how the op amp will behave so here is the frequency generator has been turned on and I connected the output of the channel A of the frequency generator to the input of the channel A in the preamp board and I'm going to inject a uh, 1 kilohertz sine wave 
in order so I can test the new op amp and see if they are uh, working like it should be or not. And here is the oscilloscope has been set and calibrated and we will see what kind of amplification these op amp are going to produce. Now according to the traces this uh, is the journal A and the trace it is goes to this switch and from this switch it is goes to these two uh, traces in here and they are connected by a resistor to the uh, input of the uh, pre uh, amp driver of the power amp so i connect disconnected the two resistors that feed directly to the uh, the signal directly to the transistors and i connected these and i soldered these studs in order so i can hook my uh, oscilloscope probes easily so yeah and here is the unit has been turned on and here is the uh, main volume control of the channel a and i'm going to connect my probe my oscilloscope probe to this pin on here and we will see after we boost up the volume if we are getting a clear sine wave or not as we can see we have a very clear sine wave in the channel A so let me pause this video and move this connector over here to the input of channel B and we will repeat the same process so here is the signal has been plugged in to the input of the channel B and I already uh, connected my oscilloscope probe to its test point and now we are going to boost up the uh, volume in order so we can see what kind of amplification that this unit it is going to or this circuit is going to produce so here is a half away here is three quarter and here is full so the amplification of the channel B it is exactly like the channel A and there is nothing wrong in the working of these two amp so i believe what i'm going to do now i'm going to remove all of these uh, solder studs and clean this board up and connect uh, all of the plugs into the right places and we'll see how this board it is going to work and if the amplification or the main power circuit it is going to work right or not so here is the preamp board has been reinstalled and back into its place and I re-secure it with its holding screws and also I reconnected all of the wires and all of the connectors into their places and before I did this I tested the uh, power transistor uh, board and I tested and pulled each component and I tested it individually and actually with a clear conscience there is nothing wrong in that board or in any component in that board so yeah so in theory we should have a working amplifier I mean the preamp driver it is working like it should be and the uh, power transistors they are working like they should be and also the preamp uh, amplifier it is working and giving the signal like it should be so all what I have to do now is connect my uh, test gear into this unit and inject a 1 kilohertz uh, of sine wave and we will see what kind of uh, s uh, signal we should get in the output uh, on the speaker output so let's begin here is my uh, oscilloscope has been fired up and I already connected the, uh, uh, this, uh, the signal generator to the uh, channel A and let me power on the unit as you can see the fan it is on 
the protection relay are clicking in so and we have no protection LED it's sliding up so everything looks good so far so let me boost up the volume and as we can see we have a really clean signal so channel A it is working like it should be and let me pause this video and move the uh, connectors to uh, the channel B and we will see what we will get and here is the channel B has been connected and let me boost up the volume and we will see what kind of signal we should get as you can see everything looks normal and channel B it is behaving like it should be so I believe we have a working amplifier all what I have to do now is bring a speaker and a music source and we will see what kind of sound that this unit it is going to produce so I connected my DVD to a channel B input and also I connected my test speaker to the output of the channel B and the amplifier it is working so let me boost up the volume output of the channel B it is excellent now let's switch to the channel A and see if it is going to produce the same kind of sound like in channel B so here is channel A has been connected and let me boost up the volume This thing it is deliver a lot of power and this thing it is sound really really good so in the end I hope you enjoy this video please like subscribe thank you for watching see you next time